half off. Bang, bang, every one. It doesn't matter. It just changes how. This was the cat's meow until this happened. Oh, okay. So when I made this, they screwed up. Finally, I'm using my head. I had it plugged in all night. Mid-State Installation's first dome project underway. It's November 30th and the weather's still holding out for us. It's about 45 to 50 degrees, but tomorrow it's supposed to snap. So today they're setting up and then they spray the foundation. They plan to spray tomorrow morning, so that gives us about a little over 12 hours to get all the window and, and door bucks into place. That one will be a tough one. Don's cutting support beams for the windows, which will stay in until we uh, spray the concrete. We constructed the outside wall to keep the front window wall flat, pushing in the form, brought the shape of the dome back to almost back to normal. And this uh, wall is going to stay up all the way to spring. Push it to uh, knock the water droplets off. I'm gonna show you how gushy this is. Well, it's the next day, and we have been working hard to get the walls dried. First thing Mid State is going to do is spray all the little windows in the place, and then the, and then the upstairs windows, and, those who, and then all the windows in the box, and of course everything else. That's the first step. And the, and the foam actually is strong enough to hold the windows in place, but for the upstairs especially, we kept the braces on so it doesn't warp the uh, the, the form and fall on our head, kill us. Big one to look like it was going to be a beast, but actually went up without any any trouble. It was the upstairs windows that got a little iffy. But well, they've been here since eight in the morning, and there's still droplets on the wall to form. This isn't good because if water hits the, the the foam, it's going to cause blistering. So we're getting leaf blowers, torpedo heaters, towels, anything. And finally, they were able to spray around 3 p.m. And by 4:30, seriously, the weather changed. Rick, Don, AJ, and myself all spent the whole evening and the next day putting up the rebar hangers. The foam was sprayed on about a quarter inch at a time until it was about two and a half inches. Then they quit. We came in to put, the, put these rebar hangers on. After these are done, then the foam guys will be back and finish the other two and a half inches, spraying about a quarter inch at a time. And this made for a very smooth and even surface. Otherwise, it would would have been lumpy and, and actually probably would deform the form. Like I said, the weather changed. But luckily for us, we beat it. We covered the sand pile with straw to keep it fairly warm. So when we started shockering, it would, it would still be sand and not ice chunks. The horizontal rebars is are the first ones we got to put up. Now we put additional rebar around all the doors in the, in the windows. Don was uh, specially selected as above surface rebar technician because I was not ready to die. Since he was more related to fear, he was volunteered. AJ, Don, and Pat were the main rebar hangers as I was off and on class to hear, and uh, Brady also helped, jumped in and helped, and Rick.
three rollers here, two stationary, one movable. Put your rebar in there. And then in over here, you can adjust how hard you want to bend all this stuff by putting holes in different spots. Bend running here. I think we want to be a little bit tighter than that now, so I'm going to put a little extra space right there. Then just pull it through. Finally, I'm using my head. <laughs> the verticals are complete now, and this actually, the dome is done. The very top here, you see the extra rebar there and that little hole, there's nothing there. That's where we're going to put a cupola, which is basically like a gazebo on top of a house. But everything's done and leaves me the, the task of putting in the floor joist hangers. Now these floor joist hangers is for the logs that are going to be going in. The tenons are going into the hole and holding up the upstairs floor. Now this process has to be precise, precise. So I'm using two lasers, one at the floor level, excuse me, the floor level, and the other is inside the hanger pointing right straight to center. This log accenting will be produced by Mike Heinzman from Tenonizer Technology, and uh, the railings will be done by Josh Heinzman from, from Minnesota, and well, he'll be assisting me on the railing. Well, actually, I'll be doing all the work with them, I should say. And really, they're gonna be doing all the work. I mean, let's be serious. For the floor beams, we're using some logs at AJ's yard that he's not going to be using for carving. Some are too small for art, but perfect for building. So, once we jump the skidster, we're going to sort through the pile to find out what we want. While we're doing this, Terry Cummings and his crew are cutting down the footing at the four inches that we need for the slab. Because remember, we're eight inches too small. Next morning, we're ready to head up to Mike's to drop off the load. Now, I've color-coded these. Green means the floor joist, yellow means the stairway, so we're actually adding stair horse to it and stair treads. The red is extra logs. Oh, we could drop the uh, trailer off too. That uh, might be a necessity. Yeah. It's just, I had it plugged in all night. Temperature reads 143 degrees on the engine. And we, there's quite a tank heater on the thing. Huh. Yeah, it sounds like it might be like... Turned out to be a button wasn't flipped. 